Through bullshit, we are bringing the city together. Hey, yo. Hey. We got Zach, Mr. Sunshine. We got Mr. Hopgood. Big John. We got Sauce Poppy in this motherfucker. Let's get it. So we got Sauce Poppy. He is a local musician. From Memphis. Like born and raised in Memphis. Born and raised in Memphis. Yeah. Um, Currently, right now, I'm just, I'm bullshitting, you know, bullshitting away and uh, just randomly, sporadically dropping anything that comes to mind. That's the best way to be. Yeah. So like what what musicians influenced your music? Uh growing up of course it was Three Six Mafia. Um uh, Three Six Mafia Represent. growing up. Um probably like high school, odd future, and then now like just like the most mainstream artists, so I can finally be mainstream like fucking Drake or Travis Scott or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was kinda checking out some of your stuff and I see you got like a wide variety of styles. Yeah, definitely. So like, what what is your preferred style? Preferably, I'd love to just rap, dude. Like just hardcore, like Lil Wayne, bars type shit. But every now and then I'll get bored and like try to sing because I heard a fucking Chris Brown song and I'm like, I can do that. <laughs> so like, when you mention versatility, like when you're coming from Three Six Mafia to Our Future, Wolfgang Kill Them All, yeah, it's like you know. That's such a big change, like especially with the culture. So when you think about versatility, mm-hmm. when you think about just going from like old school, like you know, boom bap rap to like new stream. Like, what exactly is it that you're trying to like leave your imprint on now? Um, honestly, honestly, it's really just I love music so fucking much, bro. I just can't stick to one thing for one. And then two, it's just like, I'm really just throwing shit against the wall and see what sticks. Whatever the fuck gets me out of Memphis, bro. <laughs> I fuck with it, I fuck hey, with it. You trying you to get, get out, I'm trying, I'm trying to get hey, in. Look, Cause everybody in 3-6 Mafia is, is not does in, not live in Memphis. Exactly. Hey, okay. There's there's one person that's part of, I mean, a couple of people that are part of Hypnotized Minds, you mm-hmm. know, that's still in Memphis, repping Memphis, but yeah. Yeah, everybody, yeah. Paul yeah, Juicy, they ain't, they, they don't live here. Shout anymore. out to Alice Horsey. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so hey, that's, that's the best way to be. Man. So where would you go if you, once you leave Memphis? Um, if I was to be fucking regular guy that didn't make it in music, I'd probably go somewhere like Denver or something. No, I'm talking shit. about you're, you're gonna make it in music. What if right? I was to make it in music? I yeah. whatever I guess, whatever I guess gives me the best work. So I think typically for music artists, it's either fucking Atlanta or L.A. or some shit. Well, so, you know, as we all know at the table, you know, every city's got their different, like, significant, distinctive flow. Like, yeah. wh- what do you think you, uh, I guess, what do you think you identify most with? Like, what do, you, do you more, of, like, on a drill shit? Or well, I mean, you, you, pulled, you, pulled up on, you pulled up on a pink skateboard. I so pulled up on a pink <laughs> skateboard. <laughs> so he's already kind of, like, towards uh, the West Coast. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's, so I've, got, <laughs> I got, I got, you know, it's like, it's, like there's, there's, it's got to influence your style a little bit, you know? Yeah, of course. The skate, skateboarding, how does that influence your style? Uh, skateboarding, bro. Honestly, I started it in middle school, and um, uh, I mean, I guess, I guess that's what kind of gravitated me to Tyler the Creator and stuff like just that culture. Is that because is that because perms? No. Shout out gold perms. Cameron the realist. I, I met, I I met with, perms I though. With him, you know, Dust Bowl, Dust Bowl kids. I met Perms, and I was with, like, the fucking baddest chick you can ever imagine, bro. I met Perms, and he beat me in a game of skate right in Where, front of me. Where, the Dust Bowl? <laughs> yeah. Skate park? Yeah. That's how it goes. Yeah. Did he take well, it? I, I tr- I, I, <laughs> he Who she have, go home with that night? He could have. I wouldn't have had no problem with it at all. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things. I feel like skateboarding, like... Most of my, almost actually all of my music that I've had has been from skateboarding videos. Nowadays, it's like, there's not really that skate community that it used to be where it was like, you would get the underground music community and you get the skate community in the same, like, so it's like you're both trying to promote your music. You're, they're trying to promote yeah. their skating so they can get onto brands and they're trying to, you know, get their, their ears so they can sell tickets. It's uh. We don't really have that anymore with, with like the way social media like people used to wait for um like years to get a new skate video. They don't do that anymore. Yeah, I don't know. So, but it's it's I feel like a lot of people they 
they take like music from skate videos and that type of stuff. It's like they associate it, and you know, I don't know. Definitely. I uh, at one point I was trying to make music to like get played in skate videos and stuff like that uh, when I was in college. But I guess since I'm old as fuck now, I don't even. So, I don't so, even so, hop on my own skateboard. So you're on your skate three shit though. Like, you trying to get like in the game. I'm like I'm like one of those guys that pull up to the skate park. I'm like, yeah, I used to do this. Yeah, that's that's, been, that's been me. one that's terrible kickflip. My day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> type shit. <huh? laughs> yep. So like, how like, how you feel about auto tune? I know right. it's like, cause me personally, the stuff I've heard of yours, I like the non auto tune. But yeah. of course, I'm old school when it comes yeah. to that. I, I, sometimes it's good, you know, especially just like on the hook, but. I don't really prefer it through the whole song, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So how, how do you feel about auto tune? So because all these rappers are doing it. So since I'm like, since I love to do like every angle of it of music in general. Originally, I'm rap as fuck, like no auto tune, right. and then um, a part of me wants to fucking be able to sing and shit. Yeah, <laughs> or I mean, a part of me wants to be like you know artsy with it. Sing, so I'm like, which if that's what you're going for, that, that makes course. sense. Yeah. Use auto tone, yeah. especially yeah. if you're not. You know, heard me. And I'll I'll be honest. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, because I was just pretty much hardcore hip hop, just lyrical and yeah. all of that shit. And then I met uh, Yo Gotti's manager, and I gave him a CD, and he was like, uh, "Oh yeah, you're you're very lyrical. You're like a a backpack rapper." And backpack rappers typically don't get played on the radio. So and what's lamest terms for a backpack rapper? I ain't let him finish what he was saying. A backpack rapper, as simple put, is uh, someone who is, it's pretty much as hip hop as you can get in 2024, bro. Lyricism, just introspective as hell. And as far as the lyrics, just talking about their life or what's going on in the world, very reflective and stuff like that. But um Nothing that you can go to the club and get some ass thrown on you. <laughs> right, right. Something like that. Yeah, I think, well, see, yeah, that, and I think a lot of it, too, though, man, is is a lot of these guys that aren't as skilled lyrically as you yes, are. Yes, definitely, yeah. They're going to be, those are the types that are just ready to sign their life away. 100%. And not even think about it twice just because they're showering them with these these items and these gifts and this and that. Yeah. So it's like. They can easily manipulate them to get more money out of them, which you're more lyrical. So people are more lyrical usually are a lot smarter. Yeah. So they're not going to just take any deal you set out on the table. Yeah, know? definitely. So, you know, unfortunately, that's why kind of the, the, the newer rap is where it is today is because you have so many, so many of those people that are just getting taken advantage of completely. 100%, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it just kind of messes up the people who actually have talent mm -hmm. and lyricism, which – is what rap was originally. Exactly. And now it's just all get rich quick. Exactly. Whatever a viral moment on the internet is. Exactly. Like just, yeah. Or whoever's got just some kind of, some kind of alter ego going on or something weird. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, something that's this, this, yeah. Yeah. Like that's said, exactly you, all, you, If you're going to get clicks and taps. Exactly. That's all that matters. But, yeah. Yeah. I guess the, the wild dynamic for me, like just even look, being on the outside looking in, is that the underground is considered lyrical now, and the mainstream is just anybody taking a 360. Just like, True. You know, like, just immediately, like, hey, I need my it's, money now. I feel it's one word type shit. Like, they're just like, yeah. that's my money, I need it now. I feel like it's all, it's, it's two sides. It's shock value and what's the catchiest. And underground artists don't, don't typically make the catchy things. They're usually uh, just trying to display their talent. I see a lot of people hoping that their talent finally gets recognized. But if you go to these people that can put you in positions that can, you know, get you played on the radio or in clubs and stuff. You got those, uh, I saw that, that merch that you were doing. Was, was it Make Killing Lame Again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's tight. Of, that's tight. Of, well, you're still doing it? Yeah, I'm still doing it. Um, Saucepoppy.com, you know. Saucepoppy.com. <laughs> there's the plug. There's the plug. S-A-U-C-E-P-A-P-I. There's a link down there. Just been from Memphis, bro. Um, I, I stay in like right between South Memphis and downtown, so um, yeah. I just hear everybody get shot all the time and shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love Memphis. I don't like that shit at all. Yeah, you got, you got a new pup too, right? Yeah. yeah. You actually saw we spoke out about the guns and the folks out here with the guns mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, so how you feel about it? 
Well, yeah, I, I know it kind of. I think it's all the gun violence and, and murders and craziness. I think it's it's very idiotic, bro. It it doesn't really make sense to me. It, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me, oh. especially you know, someone with pigments and skin color. I just don't see how we're freaking killing each other. Yeah. When we literally was just fighting for each other. I don't get it, but. I think yeah. I think that it goes down to like a lot of a lot of you know there's so much deep rooted trauma that people don't know how to talk about and that too, it's, yeah. it's just like there's there's a divide and we have to figure out a way to communicate together. So yeah, there's a lot of hate on every side for no reason. It's, a, it's a hate that we didn't even we weren't even born with. You know, we're we're growing with it. Yeah, it's like what happened to hustling? You had to go get, steal yeah, cars. That, Break your folks' cars and take their stuff. Like, why don't you go hustle, bro? Exactly. Yeah, it makes like, no sense, bro. Go what pick happened? up a sack. Go get your what bag, man. Game, man. Like, <laughs> for real. It's like, bro. Like, yeah. Come on, man. With the with the programmers, the key file programmers, if like that they, flipper they, zero. They put all the energy that they put in the stealing cars and this dumb we shit. We could go to the fucking moon. Like, bro. <laughs> like, bro, you what should be you are, you, six figures a year as much stuff as you're out here doing illegally that Definitely. you can put that that towards something positive. Definitely. But I do feel as if uh, the lack of funding probably. Absolutely. These guys don't have, yeah, they, they may not be in the right place. They don't have the right surrounding. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, you, put, you, put, you put something good, like you put a good kid in a bad environment, they're going to end up being, it's way more seductive to be bad. Yeah, it's, it's like really this, hard to, to be a good kid being molded by a bunch of bad people. Yeah, you know? it's like the same as like certain seeds can't grow certain plants yeah. and certain dirt type shit. I mean, that's just yeah. going back to the human dialectic. You know, you just, you, you place somebody just, Piggyback on what Ryan said, just putting somebody in that environment. I mean, you know, a bad apple around a bunch of, you know, a good, uh, a bad apple and a whole bunch of good apples is going to spoil the rest. Yeah. You know, definitely. that's unfortunately what we have to deal with now. You know, with the city and everything, it's just everybody's just so like toxic and just ready just to get the quickest buck. When in reality, there's so many things we can get together as a community. Yeah. Do better together. Now that's honestly why I made the make killing lame again hoodie. Yeah, those are those are Just really dope. Those you are really have dope. to. Someone has to shift the uh, the mindset of, yeah. I guess the culture. The culture is like you have to be the fucking toughest person in the world and you know stand on everything you say and shit like that. No one can fucking knock you off your square. But yeah. someone yeah. has to put in your mind. You remember like back in the day, like when people got to fighting. Uh, if someone pulled out a gun, we're like, dude, you're fucking weak as hell. Yeah. Oh, God, look, look. Got yeah, roasted yeah, instantly. Yeah, bro, instantly roasted. Why would you bring you a fight? fucking gun to a uh, I push back fist a fight? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. now it's like, um, I see people say, oh, yeah, we don't fight anymore. Man, this, like, yeah, my, it's not my, 2010, man. My little yeah. nephew in elementary school, he can shoot somebody. Like, Yeah. So, like, no, someone has to look at them now and just be like, that's why the fuck would you do that? We got to disciple our youngins here. Like, I mean, everybody's so quick to shoot. I mean, you know, like you were saying back in the good old days, everybody would just be like, all right, you know, you go 10, there's no cameras around because the phones don't like, they don't have cameras back then. Yeah. It's like, you just get your 10 out and shake up after. Now everybody's so quick to shoot, stab, mm -hmm. whatever. It's just, it, it, shit's violent, man. It's no, I actually crazy, think bro. that's why, you know, you're facilitating the conversation through your clothing. I think that's powerful, man. Appreciate it. Show. Yeah, yeah it's, really, it's really cool. No, because I know, I know there was a shooting over, uh, over on Madison. Guy was leaving the bar. They just pulled up, shot him. We're laughing at him, sitting there dying, and took a picture. Yeah, I remember. Like, that's just sick, bro. Y'all, y'all, morally, the y'all are like yeah. jacked. Uh, how jacked up in the head? How, what makes you that messed up in the head? Exactly. To do that, but no one's, no one's standing up. That's lame. That's that is lame. severe lame, lame baby. It's lame. Sure. No one's standing up and, and like, telling them that though. Yeah. No, no leaders, I guess, of the city yeah. that they look no up to. No one of importance is having the conversation. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so so it's got to get like you know, it's, it's almost like oral tradition, like how they you know back in the day where folks you know pass traditions down to each other. Mm -hmm. You don't have good households now. You don't have good you know family units. So everything is just kind of like crashing down and just becoming a melting pot. You, you, you mean we like, you know what I'm saying? What like, you mean? Nobody's got any kind of guidance anymore. Not at all. They look to their, you know, you have your popular culture figures, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what's so important. I mean, I've had, I've had great guidance growing up. I chose the, the more attractive option, which is the quick money. Like that's what yeah. everyone's going to like. It's, 
like I had I had suburban life growing up and like you know it's just it's very attractive it's super track quick easy money and that's the problem that I think is most of the most of the people making the problems are not you know not dealing with the real you know they're actually in the suburbs they're not actually in the city not but it's, it it's just like he said I mean I remember kind of the the beginning stages of hip-hop and even three six mafia like hustling like T.I., G. Yeah, bring that shit back. Gucci, yeah. man, and shit like that. Yeah, like, shit how what? the fuck yeah. did it shift to us? Like, no, I'm going to get have you this made, Drago have and you, shoot. Have you made any no, music leave, like yeah. Have you made any music like that? Have you made any, like, get money type, like, let's get, let's grind, let's hustle type music? Maybe, but that wasn't like me. I was hey, like okay, I heard. No, I was, that's shit. trap music oh, yeah. to a whole. <laughs> I, I didn't know, because I've, I've, been, I've been, I listened to the one that was on YouTube. Was that one? You, you, just, you just dropped a music video, didn't you? Yeah, I also have like eighty something music videos, so you have to. You just dropped. Well, I'm, ta I'm talking about the one you just dropped. With the girl in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Heat of the night. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Yeah, that's far. Heat of the night. Check what it out. Can you tell Heat us of the about night. That? <laughs> so, 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 Heat of the night. What, what can you tell us about that song and like the direction of the video that you made? Uh, Heat of the night is a song by Lil Desi X. Shout out to Lil Desi X, um, female artist and producer. Uh, she did a collaboratory mixtape with a lot of Memphis artists and I was so lucky to be a privilege to be a part of it. Right. Um, we did the song and she let me take control, I guess, of the chorus and I guess the direction of the song. And of course me, who's so such an advocate for getting content out there, I was like, yeah, you know, I own a camera, so that's, that's film for God, it. that is king. So I, I rented out an Airbnb out here on South Main and we shot a music video for it. It's hey, kind of like a little- There you go, there you go. Like a little love song, just a little smoke vibe. ballad. Gotcha. Yeah. Is she, is she from Memphis as well? She's from Memphis, yeah. Okay. Can we play it? Can we play it real quick? Is that for, sure. if we're to play? Okay. We'll, we'll, uh, yeah. we'll do that in post. Is that, should, we, should we play it right now? Could, <laughs> could, could I, can I play it? Then we put it in in post? All right. Edited by me, by the way. I just let my demons talking out on make a pay. If I die before I wake, I'll finally get some peace. Start this forest fire as you dance in front of me. Dance in front of me. It's the heat of the night that's controlling me. Taking heat of the vibe, what it's showing me. I'm afraid if I get faded, you won't notice me. Out my mind, can see your mind is where I'm supposed to be. So call up on my cup full of spirits. Money talking and it's all that I'm here. They won't feel me cause yeah. I won't let them near me. Starting to think these niggas low key fear me. Any mini money, I need some more. Send my low and it take you to your hole. Pocket rocket, that's going me through the door. There's too much sauce to be ducking on the floor. Yeah. And it's the heat of the night that's controlling me. I can see in my third eye that you chosen me. If them trees ain't on fire, then they supposed to be. Long as she's by my side, we don't go to sleep. Hell yeah. So that's more on the artsy side, you know. Travis Scott kind of. That's what you're saying. You wanted to get into like the mainstream type shit. Is this like exactly? This is where you like step. You, you touch your toes into the mainstream type shit. This is where I like lay down the lyrical type shit. It's the vibey, like dreamy kind of music. Exactly. Really like, cloud rap, it's, it's, they call it. Right. Hey, like, shout out Young Lean. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you know. It's it's crazy though because you, you have you have all. The reach as as far as like the skills of both sides is yeah. a lot a lot of people with the pop culture type like that stuff don't have the lyricism that you I'm, have. Drake is the only one that's, that's exactly who can like master everything. And he's from in. Canada and claims Memphis. This shit's crazy. <laughs> shit is crazy. Well, I mean, crazy. he used to come here all the time in the summer. Shout out Dennis though. You know, he cool as hell. You know, Dennis lived here. And Dennis cool as fuck. Yeah, I got, Dennis. <laughs> I, I got a picture with him. I got a picture of him at 152 when I was because I know. That that man, on my that head. Man, that man, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know. Else, Bro, man. iconic. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> they should make oh, like man. Dennis. They, he needs to have Dennis Graham stashes. Hell he yeah. T-shirts, actually, for sure. Yeah. Actually. Hell yeah. Sell them, Johns. Hey, hell yeah. But 
But yeah, I'm digging that. You, you know, uh, so, shit. so you're producing the beats, you're mastering, you're recording the videos, you're editing the videos, you're pretty much doing everything. So back to what I was saying. Um, oh yeah. So. But as far as like what you're saying with the, with the old school rapping, three six mafia stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, but see, the, back then you had your main gangs. Your main gangs they have codes of code of ethics. Yeah. You go do some dumb shit, you're gonna you're gonna have to like pay for that. Definitely, you know? yeah. And that's the thing. Now you got all these little made, I, I say made up, or like little small click gangs out here doing a lot of this stupid stuff. Yeah. And so that's why it's just like, that's why it's just abnormal because they I, don't have you know a code I, of ethics. I think what it is, um, I guess the OGs that they have, there's no end benefit to any uh, advice that they would give them. At first it would be, you know, of course, we're going back to hustling. So, you know, you get this and then you get your, you, you disperse that money that you earn to, I guess, whatever bills you owe, your family and stuff like that, or you can get yourself out of the hood. But now, what the OGs are just teaching them is just fucking kill everybody. Yeah, just so, like, <laughs> it's, it's no, I don't think they have anything that they're looking forward to to respect the OGs to, you know, just take their advice or anything. Yeah, and there's some of them out here. You selling that are selling drugs, hustling. Yeah, got got fitting on your stuff. So you trying to kill that off your, your, fan, your 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 clients. It's that like too. it's just it's just craziness, man. And craziness. they're using it as well because don't get me wrong, these people are drugged the fuck out. Yeah, one hundred percent. That that's the only thing that makes some sense of how some of these people are so evil. Really. Uh, yeah, definitely. With with the just straight up just killing people for fun, trying stuff. every like, fucking thing, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's like I don't know, man. Well, let's just piggyback on what the industry wants you to do at the end of the day. True. But see, Shit. Three Six Mafia was talking about all kinds of crazy stuff back in the day, but people didn't go do it. I mean, the, it was you know the main drug, like, what, Coke? Well, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Coke even, and weed even and with lean. The, even with the robbing, stealing, all that, all that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it's just like, yeah. But it's like, I, th I think music now and social media that are a lot of these people's parents. Well, right. it's the because, fact that social media exists. Yeah. Now we see you, and you have to live exactly what the fuck you're rapping right. about. The main component, yeah. you know, True. the internet. Yeah. Touche. Touche. One hundred percent. With the internet, you know, in the last, especially like ten years, you know, everything's been blowing up. You know, whether from it be, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Vine, TikTok, Snapchat, anything that can be consumed very easily by any age demographic. So you know whether it's plain view, you know back in the day, you know when Three Six Mafia was releasing all their stuff, you know talking about they was in their music. Yeah, it's different, you know, like it wasn't as easily as accessible, you know, like I guess the uh, prerogative that you have to do this or do that to be, you know, part of this. Yeah, you know, but it's in plain view when you're looking at social media. Yeah, did y'all see Juicy J say that he's never done coke? Yes, and and. and as a person who was 18 years old in the studio with Three Six Mafia, I can most definitely vouch to the, yeah. to that is well, that is very sign. that's true. Yeah, that's true. He, he never has. Actually, one time I was at the studio, and Juicy, came, I, I was there with the female, which he called her Julia Roberts because she looked like Julia Roberts. But <laughs> uh, anyway, he was like he was like, hey y'all, y'all want to hear some coke? We were like, nah, nah. So I know now. He was just testing us yeah. to see, you know, what kind of people, because cause I grew up with Lil White. We, we, I've known him since I was seven. Yeah. So I was there with him. So I think he was kind of like testing to see who, who who's he hanging out with, what's he into type stuff. So I was like, nah, man, <laughs> I'm going to do that. But, yeah, he yeah he he definitely not. He, he does not. That is true. Now, when and, he said it, uh, my older brother who put me on him, he was like, nah, I don't believe that. Yeah. Well, that's the thing with 36 Mafia. They rapped about, you say people living it. They, the stuff they rapped about is either stuff they did personally or mm -hmm. people they know yeah. have done. Yeah. So, yeah, so, but, but now it's like, yeah, these dudes are just, they're just like admitting all the crimes they do on the rap songs sometimes nowadays. It's like, really, bro? Like, yeah, dude. <laughs> that, that's, that's, the, that's the fine line with Atlanta rap now is because, you know, of course, you know, Thug, Free Jeffrey, he didn't do nothing wrong. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's the fine line between that and, you know, you have artists like Future that, you know, are in closed interviews that are like, you know, I'm a lightweight. And they're like, what? They're like, yeah, I don't do none of this shit. I just rap about it. But, yeah. You know, it, it's just about, you know, their friends' experiences just piggybacking on what John said, you know? So 
in reality, it's all these kids are just wanting to, you know, get an image, but, you know, that's the game. And there you have the division between a backpack rapper and the mainstream artist uh, because you should better. Better. he has to make that music for the fucking party and mm -hmm. what's going on at the party. Yep. Yeah. Not True. talking about fucking wars and so exactly. you, you, right. like that. Right. you said you were trying to like get into the mainstream type stuff. What like so? What would you talk about in the main? Like it was so just the same. I type I'd, stuff? I'd consider myself like Lil Wayne. So okay. Got so it. I can Easy be literal to this fucking bar and fuck bars and shit, but I can exit out the. I'm gonna shoot another. Right. Person in my neighborhood. Exit out the main right. yeah. yeah, that's really the only thing I'm really against, honestly. Just yeah, true. That shit is retarded. But other than that, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of rappers do have to dumb it down, though. You know what I mean? Sometimes, if if you want to actually, you know, get the the radio play or get you know a hundred views and everything, so yeah, it's just it sucks. It's that way, you know. But mm -hmm. it is what it is, unfortunately. You know, a lot of a lot of people still could do, you know, come with the lyricism, but people just aren't attracted to it as much. I don't think you exactly. Know, it's, it's very unfortunate. You just have to know how to do it right. Um, I mean, I must. I can't even listen to a backpack rapper room. You know? <laughs> like I can hear it one time, but I wouldn't want to play it again. It's all about the replay value and what's catchy. Yeah, and stuff for like sure. That. Replay value is yeah. thousand percent. Yeah, like three six month. A hundred percent. All replay. Yeah. Because everybody had their own style. Yeah, and to see like, cause, cause see, when I first started going to the studio, uh, Kusta, Kusta Nika, uh, he was already out of the group. Um, Gangsta Boo was out of the group, but you know later on, you know, when the Mafia Six got back together, you know, I was able to see Cooper out and became really good friends with Gangsta Boo. Rest in peace. Rest um, in peace she, uh, but Coop, man, like he. Actually, I would say it's kind of like you. He's got his different styles. Yeah. He'll have his little triplet where he'll, like, record in three different voices. Yeah. And sometimes two different voices. And then he'll do, like, some singing-type rap. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like I love musicians that can change up their style and stuff. So that's why I was, like, I was really digging a lot of your a lot of stuff I was listening to on you because just I was like, is that him? Like, yeah. I was like, it ain't a feature. So I was like, yeah, that's him, but. Yeah, so so I like how how you, your versatility um, of rapping is is really good. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah look, individuality, you know, it makes one stand against the rest. So what you're doing is powerful. You know, at the end of the day, you're going against the grain, doing what you feel is right, yeah. doing what you feel from your soul, and you you know you're projecting that through your music. Yeah, that's I'm, what's I'm, important. You know, a lot of people have lost the way; they're just trying to sound like somebody else. Yeah, but you're doing you. Respect, man. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it, man. Definitely. Yeah, be you for sure. A hundred percent. That's that's, that's what I'm trying to do the most. Uh, every time that I venture off into another genre or a new style of music, I'm just trying to make sure I don't ever step out of character while I'm doing it. And um, right. I just and I also just don't want, I guess, a core audience that I eventually build to get bored. Right. You know. Yeah, that's why I always yeah, yeah, always throw some. You know, always throw a surprise in the mix though. Yeah. Like, what? Hold up. Wait. Sasha's just Sasha dropped this. Wait. Yeah. What is this? And then they, you know they start listening to it and they're like, oh shit. Okay, this is different. Yeah. It's yeah. Something that's going. It's already grew on me. You know, the first like you know, the two three minutes I listen to this, I'm playing it again and again and again. Yeah. So it's important, you know, especially with the kids now. You know, they're so impressionable. You exactly. Know, they're going to pick up something that they immediately vibe with. Mm-hmm. One hundred percent. But yeah, it's like. um it's like, and two, the older you get as an artist, you know, you're, people are starting to have kids. Yeah. So they in the streets no more. So if all you're rapping about all the time is the streets, you're going to lose those fans that, you know, are yeah. having families now, have kids now, and they ain't in the streets no more. You know, they're straightening up their life. Yeah. You know, and then, and then, you know, they get older, they have grandkids now. So now they worry about the grand, you know, grandkids. So it's like everybody, yeah. Yeah, you, you kind of have to sometimes evolve or just change up your style slightly, mm -hmm. still giving some of your older type stuff, you know, for the for the, for the ones that are still in the streets. Yeah, and just make sure it's <laughs> it's, it's undeniable, man. Right. And make sure it's undeniable. Because you do have people that, I guess, don't change, uh, I guess, the direction of the type of music that they make. For example, Future, who is now 40 years old, but he still can, he still can drop an album and it 
and the youth can be, you know, tuned in. I mean, in. his album just did two fifty five. I'm just sitting there like, it's crazy. Like, it's crazy. Like but you you also have artists who do eventually grow over time and mature in their art and craft, like a, a Kendrick, or um, I know a Tyler the Creator album probably does never sounds the same from the previous one and stuff like I mean, that. He, he did that with you know Igor, like yeah, completely that changing the himself whole, within every album whole concept. Yeah. But it's all the same guy, and you can tell, and that's the beauty behind it. Like, it's like, and, yeah. you know, with albums like that, it's meant to be listened to front to back. Yeah. You know, you have a lot of these albums that are just, you know, kind of just misplaced, thrown together. You know, mm -hmm. they're not, it's just, you know, hastily made art. It's not, you know, what the benchmark should be, you know, yeah. whether they're telling a story during, you know, the first song to whether, you know, whether you're running an EP or LP. True. Yeah. You know, whether it's five or whether it's 15. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the story should start and finish, you know, in For between sure. that. Yeah, because yeah, I think people, too, they just try to rush it, you know, but which it's understandable because you, you got to keep coming with the content. You know, it's all yeah. about the content. Definitely. Um, you know, like um, like Jelly Roll, for example. He was rapping. Yeah. He, but he started coming with the content. And now his wife has a top 10 podcast, the, the Dumb Blonde Show. Shout out, Bunny. And now Jelly, he did his rap albums, rock, country, and has won so many country music awards. And he was the first person in history to have the same song in the top two on rock and country charts. Crazy. At the same time. Never been done. That's crazy. Rock and country, yeah. Yeah. And, and, he's, and, he, and he's a great rapper. Yeah. One of the best freestyles, freestylists I've heard. That's so, goals. Yeah. If my so, POS, I sell drywall. So, you know, you could do, oh, you could do anything, man. <laughs> you know, like Jelly said, he was a drug, a drug dealer and a prostitute. Became one of the top dudes in, on, in country and one of the top female, female and re overall podcasters. Hell yeah. You know, so... You just gotta stick with stick to stick to what you know, man. Keep bringing your content, man, and, and yeah, yeah, definitely. It'll go. You just gotta gotta be at the right place, right time, and the meet internet, the right people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's who. That's yeah. <laughs> but keep pushing that content, man. It is it is a mix of content, originality, and connections. So, you know, yeah, a lot of people, you know, in the industry will just tell you, you know, it's like, oh yeah, you know, you you just. You just got to be around the right time. Yeah, that's bullshit. They just yeah. throw the word network out yeah, in, yeah, they in don't the ever, sky. Yeah, they don't give you the sauce because, I mean, yeah. giving the sauce would give the recipe away. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Another thing. Oh, go ahead. Well, networking with, with no end goal, you know, it's just like not, it's having having your path, mark, you know. Yeah. You know, you know what? You, you've got your, your eyes set on the prize right now. I can see it. Yeah, definitely. Um, And it, it takes a lot of mental warfare to, uh, you know, not – like go off when someone just throws the word network at you as if uh one size fits all and shit like that it's like uh telling a scientist someone who like builds spaceships to go network with a fucking network with nasa you know, with yeah. a damn dog groomer yeah. or some shit yeah, like, go, to, go, right, tell, go right. tell a fish to climb a tree or whatever you know, type of shit yeah so i don't know you know there's there's no sense in telling me to fucking network with yeah for sure Jada Pinkett Smith, like it, it does me <laughs> no good. But I uh, you know, unless you want to, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> want to like sugar mama, you know. What yeah, you might be, you might be Get my wife's you name out. <laughs> hey, hell, okay. <laughs> you have yeah. a great point, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, man, and, and see, that's like he was saying too. As far as like you know, a lot of these guys' albums, you got one or two singles, and then the rest of the albums, like you like skip, skip. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I know, I know. Back in the day, you know, like as far as like, like with the three six mafia and stuff like that, they would have like seventy, eighty songs and pick, you know, the top twenty songs yeah. out of it. You yeah. know what I mean? So there, there's so much music that I've heard that's never been released. That's it sick. was hard. That's sick. So like, yeah. Did you that, hear? Huh? You, you hear the song I did with Crunchy Black? Have I heard? Oh, you? Oh, you got one crunchy? Yeah. Oh no, I hadn't heard that. Okay, yeah, I got, yeah, I got, yeah. I got, I got a list of that. Are we gonna do it on the pod? Can we do it on the pod? Could we play it right now? Is that oh okay? hell yeah, play that. Yeah, shit. we'll play that joke, <laughs> man. Hey. 
Yeah. I said, I, I got my phone, wallet, keys, and nine millimeter. Hey. South Memphis streets, a piece, set in a freeze cup. Niggas in the streets, they want to receive the okay. shit that's in my pocket, but all that I keep, sir. Phone, wallet, keys, and nine millimeter. Hey. South Memphis streets, a piece, set in a freeze cup. Shit, call my boy. Yeah, it's a real, it's Memphis shit right here. The end of your tunnel, it's some light on the skin of my chick, it's some light at the end of the stick. Play a laser tag in this bitch, looking cold, put the heat on my hill. I ain't stunting forest fires, cause the tree always lit. See, I'm a dog, I'm a dog, I'm a go get the stick. I'm the new Tiger Woods, way I tell you, I like what never changed up. Yeah. Like, ripple guns running the show, sending prayers through them clouds. I don't run out of hope. See, I'm the new number five, I go after. Plenty serpents in that grass, so we gotta stay low. Her money chasing, call me Jason. I come in with the mask, and I be feeling like a beard. I come in with the stash. The way I came up in here spinning got me feeling like Taz. Before a nigga shake the spot, I gotta make sure I grab my phone, wallet, keys, and nine millimeter. South Memphis streets, a piece, set in a freeze cup. Niggas in the streets, they won't. 27. Oh yeah. shit. Okay. Sauce probably, okay. Sauce probably is 2017. Sauce probably laying down the sauce yeah. for real, for real. Hey, he been been laying down the sauce. I like this style. Yeah. This is fucking gas, dude. Hey, a brown don't get run down. Well, you say you say you're 29. So look at two. I look, I'm 29. Fucking, I look way worse than you. Damn. I look crazy. Crazy black. I'm 40. Man, he's 22. Look at him compared to you, dude. Look at him. He's 22. Damn, really? <laughs> I turned 23 in a couple days. I turned 23 in a couple weeks. But, yeah. We have the same birthday, dude. Same birthday, April 26. Taurus twins, Terry twins. Hey, that was sick, though, because I got to mix his vocals. Oh, for real? I can hear that shit. That's fucking. I made the beat too, so it's like. Yeah, so you see you all around. Like, what's your favorite dog? Like, FL. FL? Yeah. So, like. I guess it's GST. I'm sure you go to, like, like Serum, you like. Nexus. Yeah, okay. All the time. I I had to pick a brain. I used to do this shit as a kid, so I had fun with it. I've been been producing literally since second grade, bro. You, you longer than Damn, second you grade. Hey, wait, yeah. what are you doing? Do you have second your grade. first? Do you have your first song you ever produced in second grade? Hmm? Do you have your first produced song in second oh, grade? Man, said I've been doing oh, this for God, that'd be great. years. Hell, no. It's like I'm on a only family doing computer it for like nine, and shit. Like, uh, all right, now teach me some shit. <laughs> how, how were you producing when you, were, you said you were in second grade? How'd you do that? My older brother is a rapper, Measy Mac. Um, Beez, you said Measy Mac. Up, Measy Mac. He grew up listening to uh, Three Six Mafia. His favorite rapper was Laura Infamous and shit. So since they make their own beats. Oh, yeah, yeah, since they make their own beats, he started making his own beats. And once he gets off the family computer, and then I'll hop on that shit. Hey, that's respect, grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, As see, respect, big dude, respect. I love Crunchy, man. He's a, <laughs> dude, now, now him, Crunchy. We talking about somebody that keeps their what they rap about one hundred. One hundred percent, yeah. He's. Yeah, he's that guy. He is one hundred. What, <laughs> yeah. what he say he will do, he will do. Mm-hmm. To what this he day, he said he did. He did. Yeah. To Alleg- this day, allegedly. Do it. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> 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 but yeah, man, I love Crunchy, man. He's cool. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay. I met the guy and um, I met him. I told him I did a song with uh his son. No, I did a song with him first. I'm sorry. I did a song with his son too, by the way. But um. Oh, your son's bumping. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's the boy black. I did yeah, a song with yeah. him. Yeah, he's he's good. But I met him uh. Gave him his feature money and stuff. He did the feature maybe the same day or the same week. And then uh, later on, he just called me. I was working, delivering for FedEx. I had him in my earphones. And he's on the phone for like an hour just fucking talking. And I'm like, bro, like, 
this is crunchy. Like, <laughs> 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 what the fuck? Uh, he's co- oh, he's co- your he's sauce so cool, poppy man. though, you know. It's just yeah, coming I guess up. I gotta look at it like that. Hey, man. If he was talking to you that long, he must have liked. He must have liked what he heard, man. Yeah. So he was like, uh, he's like, yeah, man, we did a song. We're friends now. <laughs> okay, uh, shit. cool. Oh uh, yeah, how you look? He's a friend I had, man. Cause look, uh, yeah, if if you down with Crunchy and he's around, you ain't got to worry about nobody doing nothing. Straight up, cause they might something might allegedly yeah, happen. allegedly happen. You yeah. never know. Allegedly, <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. But yeah, no, actually, I saw. Um, I was actually in the studio with with, with Crunchy and Gangsta Boo a week before she passed away. Her and Crunchy were actually working on an album. Yeah, the Drummer Boy was producing, which not sure what the status is of that. Uh, if it's even gonna come out, um, but yeah, man. So yeah, but Crunchy, man. And I think yeah. that was uh, he's a he's a goat for sure. It was within the same month that she died that he was on the phone with me because he he brought yeah. that up too. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, man. Mm-mm-mm. Rest in rest in peace. Rest in peace, Lola. But yeah, so what what other Memphis musicians like I don't want to say well no, but I mean like somebody like Crunchy, have you you done anybody else that's that's been in the game for a while? Have you done any more songs with anyone else? From Memphis, uh Or just in general. Okay, well well I can say from Memphis, um you I don't know if you heard you've heard of uh Black Smurf. Yeah, Smurf's a homie. You've heard real, of Black yeah. Smurf. Okay, cool. Well, Good people. Uh, I went to high school with him. Uh, I shot the music video that got him famous. I'm in a music video with like a big afro Word. and shit. Yeah. So, like, which song? Which song it's was that? Uh, it's, I think it's like execution something. Okay. Yeah. Word. I shot that video. Yeah. I had a actually, it's a funny story you say that. I had a long night of drinking with him from uh, his, his show at Growlers. Oh, yeah. About, yeah about, about a year and a half ago, we went up to there to the local and we got fucked up. Yeah. He's he's he's, he's, he's cool. honestly like he's genuine energy like you don't really yeah. get that with the music inter- like with the music industry definitely like with most people they're just fugazi yeah like, they're just just putting on a front to make the label happy make you know obviously their fans semi happy but you know mm-hmm. at the end of the day have you ever been a, have you ever been approached by a label N- no I have not see so, okay so there hasn't been a, a how much is your soul worth conversation. <laughs> yeah. you can't post I don't know. Hey, look, I, I don't think this guy gonna take this into this. I, I don't see it. You can kind of tell. I've never been, a, and I don't know why though, because I'm always fucking dropping, bro. Yeah. But it's 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 different times now. Like labels want you to go viral first. No one's doing artist building and shit like that. Kind of. Yeah. Well, the whole thing, at least the the, the blueprint that I've seen with. What I grew up around. So, I mean, I, I basically grew up on Beale Street. I mean, I was a little motherfucker running around up down Beale Street. He he might have met me before when I was a fucking kid. He don't remember. <laughs> it's a 152, shout out. Yeah. But, uh, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, my, my whole point is, man, is that, you know, the label will hit you up on a random basis. That's one thing I still can't figure out. You either have to be spouting what they really want you to be saying. And, of course, you know, like you said, like just one little hit, whether it's, you know, now you have a platform like TikTok or something like that, you know, where, I mean, you could post anything and go viral. You know, so if you post something and, you know, all the little kids are doing dances and shit to it, I mean, you're going to get approached whether you like it or not. I mean, they'll find your yeah. number, man. Yeah. TikTok, yeah, TikTok is where it's at, man. Uh, I, I, have you ever heard of Muck Sticky? I've I've heard the name. Muck Sticky. Heard of Muck Sticky. Yeah, 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 Muck Sticky. Yeah. My mom right, used to so play Muck pool. So Muck Sticky, with. pretty much, yeah. his genre is is considered hip hop because he's he raps, but he has like a a unique voice, he, you know, that he uses when he records. It's really just stoner music, really. Yeah. It's like he, if there was just a a hip hop stoner genre, like yeah. But yeah. he actually. Because of all his, like, he was before his time. Like, a lot of his, so many so many samples of his have showed up on TikTok and went viral. Mm-hmm. He's got one called Fuck Off. He actually was number four. Yeah, it was a big one. On, yeah. Was it Billboard or was it Apple Music? It was Billboard. Number was four Billboard. Yeah, on Billboard crazy. for hip-hop. That's crazy. Go fuck yourself. Do it all hits. because TikTok? TikTok? His, his <laughs> one, well, all, he got a lot, but the one just was huge on TikTok. Yeah. 
So you know that's yeah, man. So so definitely, it, you know, it is it's so it's crazy how it's, it's changed. Like yeah, it goes from like what two decades ago, I guess, uh, or even a decade ago, handing out CDs out your trunk and shit, and yeah, being, being uh, present at these shows. Exactly. And shit. Yeah, like, and, and, and Muck Sticker, he used, yeah. yeah, he used to hit. Uh, he used to stay at the Daisy all the time, and you know, selling the CDs and merch around town. Rest in peace, the Daisy. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah. But he um, actually he'll be in town on 420 at Black Lodge with uh, Bonsai. Okay. At seven o'clock, he yeah, actually yeah. he actually hit me up, uh, let me know about that the other day. He's down in Florida now, but but yeah, man, he's 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 living his best life, man, on that TikTok, dude. I mean, that's the goal. And, bro. and see TikTok, you know, just for that little, those little clips, you're getting paid as much as a stream, whether it's from from, I, from Apple Music or yeah. Spotify or whatever, you're getting paid off every one of those TikToks. Hell yeah. So it's, yeah. Definitely any up-and-coming musicians, definitely, man. Try, yeah, you just got to try to get your TikTok going. What about like Have a TikTok crazy band? wild stuff. With the, and you got a camera, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can just, you know, you, you know how it is? The, the goofier, the crazier, the gimmicky. Yeah. Your, your clip is the more people are going to, you know, go out there and, do their versions. Yeah. I mean, I've had on one video I had with Jerry Lawler just chugging a beer, 300,000 views in a couple of days. Oh, this, dude, mean, this, dude, this dude can chug a beer faster than yeah, in the whole I world. Have a, uh, <laughs> in the whole world, I, 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 feel, I feel like I'm going to call out everyone in the world. Yeah, can, I mean, can you do it right now? Can you do it right now? I'm sure that I'm oh, sure the yeah, can you do it right now? I guess the sitting there forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, cheers, yeah, uh, cheers, cheers to the Memphis throne, man. Cheers yeah. to South Poppy. Hell yeah. Yeah. I didn't get one for the. Hell yeah. Dang. As I said, fastest Holy whole world. Holy shit. Fastest whole that? world. Shout out Ronnie. I literally Dorchie. looked away. He the homie for real. Fast whole world. Is this what you you posted the other day, huh? Oh no, I mean I I do. I'll do what's called beer sucking, right? Like, I'll go to a bar, and, I mean, just just coming to a bunch of college kids where they all dressed up preppy as shit, you know, Chad, Brad, Stacy, Becky, oh, all them. Oh, God, frat like, bros. Like, God damn. It's an easy 20 bucks. <laughs> like, they're like, I'm like, hey, I bet you I can drink you a beer fast. So, oh, are you serious, dude? I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do it. Like, you know, and sometimes, you know, if they're cool, they'll honor the bet. But sometimes they be getting all kinds of crazy. You know, like, I have a funny story about Young Avenue. Shout out. But... This one kid, he was mad as hell. I mean, because my boy just started recording, and I mean, it was a friendly. I was like, I wasn't trying to do it for money. But he was just like, let's do it, let it run it. And he was like, I bet I can do it. And he picked it up, and I was done. He got so mad, started pulling <laughs> eyes, and we're like, all right, cool, fuck this shit. I was like, dude, I don't want your money. Just, just. You said what? He got out, bro. He did get out, bro. Hey, bro, bro, bro. bro. Hey, I didn't even pick up my beer, bro, and his beer was already if, gone, if, bro. If, you, you, you if you're curious, my authority. John, John introduced me to him. John introduced me to him, and and I was like, I was like, oh, he's, he's he's you know young, younger kid, and I was like, all right, let's hang out, whatever. And he was just like, uh, he was like, he, he chug a beer. And I, ch- I just, it's it's why he's that's why he's here. <laughs> I've never uh, seen uh, anything more Quote unquote what Ryan Hobgood said This is the I only know, reason I'm here He life, took it like a shot I, in, in my life I've never uh, like quicker, quicker than a shot I see quicker impressive than a shot. things like, He probably would finish that Before I finished the shot That was that's more impressive Than most things I've seen Is there like a world <laughs> record? Well yeah So it's one it, it, According to Guinness It's actually 1.3 But I've done their Guinness in I hope we, we can see the video So shout out Guinness World Records If you see this Bring me out to Ireland I want to smash the record I want it Hey Muck Sticky Do you have to go to Ireland? Do you have to go to Ireland to do that? Uh, I get uh, apparently. I mean, I guess. The, I mean, I would assume they're at least headquartered out there. I mean, I'm sure I they think have they a come U.S. kind of. Don't they come to you? Yeah, I like think you should like provide them video proof, and then they come to you to have some. Yeah, hey, yeah. hey, hey, I tell you, I'll ask Muck Sticky because he has the world record for wearing pajama pants for the most hey. days consecutive. Really? He's like, I think that's over a great ten story, years, actually. That's over a great ten story. years, that's not me. of wearing pajamas every day. Really? Like uh, it's like. Because he had a friend who who passed away, and ever since that, he lost that friend, he acts he just wore pajamas. Yeah, he's like I'm not, I'm not he just gonna wear real pants. Hasn't wore pajamas. real pants at all. So if you actually see him and he's wearing anything else, the pajamas are underneath. That's like because I was in a movie with him called Dig That Zebo Dune, available on Amazon Prime. Uh, they uh, he actually had uh, I think he was wearing like overalls or something, but he had his pajama pants on underneath the whole like filming. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like everybody's got their own shtick, man. Yeah. yeah. 
And I'm in, hey, I'm in fucking pink house shoes, dude. Hey, uh, hey pulled bro. up on the pink skateboard. So, bro, hey, hey, so, so uh, he had to match the pink skateboard, man. Hey, he did have the pink skateboard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, favorite colors. Hey, can kick flip though. Hey, yeah. Oh, you can kick flip. We'll do a clip right here. Clip. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot kick flip in this shit. Hell no. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck around, land the wrong way. Uh, we walk around, fucking. Uh, Crutches. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been there. I got hella canes you can borrow. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's cool. I he does have some. He, he got this one cane. He's like, he like a pimp cane. Yeah, I bought it on Bill Street, actually. Yeah, like, like, hell yeah. yeah I it's, was like, it's, a ja- it's had the Jaguar like uh, hood ornament as the cane. Perfect city for this. Yeah, yeah. I could tell. Like, you could, I feel like I'm like okay. So did someone steal this all? Like in the back in the day, someone was out here stealing these and making them into canes. I would guarantee it. All you gotta do is go find you a 17 year old kid on the street. But hey, bro, go get me a Jaguar and I'll give you $20. You'll have one the next day. Yeah, man. <laughs> my, my buddy paid $70 on my birthday for that joint. Yeah, that joint was hard. Damn. Way too, way too much for a cane. It was uh, hard. That's though. the type of I money you cool spend though. for like one of them old, like Victorian, like uh, the, the the cane blades. You know, you pull that yeah, shit out. Yeah, that's like, what I'm talking about. Could have, could have sort of like a little one shot shotgun in that, but it's like, no, nah, I got just one. Do you a, like keep was, that shit for keepsake? Well, I had. I, not gonna lie, Joe, if you're watching this, I apologize. Other Joey, not this Joey. I lost the cane in my move. Damn. Ooh. Yeah. Hey, I actually, shouldn't even yeah. said that. I could have bought a new nah, one. No, that's what you were talking about, about, about shooting people with the cane because uh, Lord Infamous actually, he had gotten a car wreck. So, you know, in his later years, he, he had a cane regularly. You know, he kind of walked with a limb or whatever. He actually had a cane, had one shot. Oh, damn. So, yeah. like, that's some Saints Road shit. Yeah, we got situation. He was like, <laughs> his cane. He had a buckshot like, like, in his game. That's yeah. some dead-ass Saints Row 2, like, all, pimp cane shotgun all you shit. Need. That's all you, need. you know, you know. Allegedly. Hey, allegedly. Dude, oh, yeah, allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. allegedly. Hey, I, I, allegedly. I ain't never heard nothing. <laughs> word of mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's what I'm saying. If you, spend, if you spend that kind of money, like, 70 whole dollars. For he might have okay, at least joke. one buckshot, I think, right? Yeah, that was a joke. 70 dollars. That joke's probably 150 now with the uh, with inflation. The inflation. <laughs> <laughs> You ever, uh, you met or have had, you know, conversation with uh, Project Pat? Yeah, actually, Saturday I was supposed to go to Montgomery, Alabama uh, for a uh, Project Pat and Lil White concert. Hell yeah. But I just, kids, and I had a, some friends there from out of town from Hawaii and Atlanta and St. Louis, so I want to spend time with them, you know what I mean? So, gotcha. but yeah, yeah, yeah. Project Pat, yeah, I love Project Pat, man. He's uh, he's awesome. Me and his uh, one of his, his his head security, like we kick it tough, and he's actually in and out of town a lot with Pat because Pat he actually goes around to different um, jails and um, juvenile detention centers to speak. Yeah, to the all. inmates with that's the Go all. Foundation. Yeah, yeah so yeah. he's. You know, his dad, him and Juice's dad, was actually a like a traveling pastor. Really? When they were kids, yeah. So That's wild. That's wild. Yeah, bro. yeah. <laughs> I, I do I know. <laughs> Considering the content. Yeah. The, you know, and, and, you know, and Pat, he used to, you know, he used like to do some things allegedly. I, you know, know. I feel like it's, it's, it's just like you got to understand, like, it's kind of like fishing. It's like you're using good bait to get people to the right message. Yeah, you know, you, they're they're putting the message out of the people that really need to hear it. Yeah. You know, you got you got the people gassing up to the song. It's like, okay, you're gassing a little too a little a little too hard. Okay, let's talk about yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, Project Pat, he's been in the feds. Can I can I speak on yeah, something? No. Oh yeah, yeah. So, Vultures too. Kanye, Project Pat coming up. If you know, you know. Listen, no, look, dude. I literally just called Project you know, Pat's you know. manager. All right. Last week, I think. Tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I got a single I'm about to drop. I don't yeah. know if it's gonna come yeah. out next week or what, bro. But I wanted him on it, and I was like, I'm gonna put like fucking thousands on it and shit. Like, so I'm calling him. I'm like, so yeah, what's the feature price? I don't know if I should say it, but oh yeah, don't say. It. He told like, me the feature or Pat. Pat. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me the feature price, and I was like, fuck, because it was like, yeah, over six thousand of what it used to be, and I was like, uh, damn. Yeah. Yeah, sounds about right. And then I went on fucking Instagram and saw a snippet that Ye put him on a song. I'm like, fuck, that's why. Hmm? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, well. Mm. I can't I can't show that on. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was the fucking reason why. I was like, well, can't have that one out. 
That would have been fucking sick, though, bro. But, yeah, man, it's crazy because if Project Pet, who's been in the feds and robbed and, and all kinds of things, is coming to the jail and telling you, hey, man, look, I can quit this stuff. You can quit this stuff. If I can, if I can go out here and do get some money, you can go out here and get some money. Yeah. I think that's going to help a lot of people, man. So I'm glad 100%. he's, you know, you know, a lot of his music could have maybe had some bad influences on people, but he's out here doing the right thing and – and, and, and again, trying to make the world better, you know what I mean? That's literally why I have to make Killing Lame again, John, because, yeah. um, I mean, I don't rap about that. I don't rap positivity, like, you know, positivity right. and shit. That's and probably why the industry like ain't shit up yet. You said what? That's probably why the industry ain't hit you up yet. Nah, sure. hell no. Nah. If I rap positivity, they'll never hit me up. Oh. I'll be fucking. <laughs> but hey, it's okay to do your own thing. You were saying he didn't, he said he didn't rap that. You didn't say he did rap that. No, I don't rap positivity. Yeah, I think you, you, said, you say you don't rap. Positive? I don't positive. Don't rap positivity oh. and shit. But no, I'm. What I'm saying is, I have the make killing lame again hoodie because I'm like, if people do find me cool, I guess um, the people that I can reach, in you know, in the streets and shit like that. Right. It. I mean, just with Project Pay, it depends on who's relaying the message and shit. No yeah. one wants to fucking listen to, and this is no disrespect, but like. If I'm in the streets, I don't want to listen to a random pastor coming to me telling me about some shit. Yeah, I want to listen to someone who's been in the exact same shoes that I'm in because you have to relate yeah. to yeah. the people that you're talking to. Mm-hmm. Or it's going to seem like you're being judgmental of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Shit, being from Parkway Village myself, look, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Seeing that shit, you know, get it out the mud. Like, that's all I, that's all you know. Yeah, yeah my home, you know. yeah. And my home in Country Man, which does security for, for uh, Pat, as well as Jelly Roll. Um, but he, uh, yeah, he said like so many of these places that they've went to, and, and and he's actually I think spoke to some of the inmates as well. But he said some of these guys like or the people that are running these programs are like we've never had a pe- a person come in that had this positive of a of a reaction and influence yeah. with the inmates as much as y'all coming here. Yeah, because they probably all it. listened to him. Yeah, up. Exactly. absolutely, yeah. exactly. It's you the know? right right person for the message. That's Hell all it yeah. is. Yeah, so. Yeah, man. It's, you know, you so as long as you're out here doing good good deeds as well, man. You know, hey, do what you do. Rap about yeah. what you want to rap about. Yeah. Just, 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 just challenging the the tough guy aspect. Exactly. So I live in South Memphis too, and Shit. I'm not killing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, how, uh, how do you feel about Post Malone? Uh, There's a reason I asked this question, by the way. Post Malone is a very talented. I don't listen to him. He's extremely talented. He's, he's really good. Even though, like, so I, f- being from where I grew up, obviously he ain't grew up in the shit we mm-hmm. did. Yeah. But it's the fact that he gives off such a radiant, positive energy, even though, you know, his music might be a little sad or it might be super happy. Yeah. Or it might just be straight vibes. It's just like, but he stays true to himself. 100%, so, you yeah. know, going forth from that, you go to the industry, you know, obviously, I mean, the moment I met you, bro. I mean, I know we talked for maybe like 30 seconds before this pod. Yeah. I got what you were putting down. Like, I could tell, like, you got the genuine energy. There's no facade. Now, I cannot say I have heard any of your music. No, it's cool. But from what the energy you're putting forth, you do that, man. Just, 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 just keep on it. But always radiate. I mean, you know, you have all these, like, you know, new age people that are always common in aura on, like, Instagram and yeah. Yee, like, Playboy Cardi. Shout out yeah. to like, but it's just like, aura is a real thing, but it shouldn't be made such a thing to where it's corny because aura is a real thing. Like you have yeah. aura, he has aura, I have aura, he has aura. Mm-hmm. But well, it's just all about one, how I think, you I think radiate I, that. I, yeah, yeah. I, I left, my, I left mine on carrier. I don't know. They, they lost my luggage. I left it on retainer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. All about just being. Original is I don't have a facade and shit. I'm I'm not a rapper, just a guy that can fucking an artist. Rap. An artist, yeah. I guess. I'm, a, I'm a guy who can make art type shit. Yeah, I really like. I, I honestly, like on his this, name. Those hoodies, <laughs> those hoodies gonna have a huge impact. I feel like they're really, really, really tight. They look good too. Thanks, dude. They look good. You know, all the people I've seen wearing them look good in them. That's the thing. It's like it's like okay, you look. It's like the energy you're putting out because you're putting a spread positive message just makes you look better. Yeah. It's all about um, showing people I really don't give a fuck yep. what you guys like. I'm just going to be 
Sauce Poppy. Hey, that's what Tyler, <laughs> sauce. Yeah. That's what Tyler did, and look where he's at now. And that's, that's how you get sauce. your core fans. That's how you get the people that respect you for you and not expect you to be a certain way and shit. Like you know, Yo. yeah. yeah man, that's, that, just... that's the whole, the biggest point behind artistry, just in history, is not giving a single fuck what anybody thinks. Just doing you, making that obvious to the masses, and doing your thing, and just putting your foot down. Yeah. Like you put enough energy towards that. Folks gonna feel you. Yeah. Whether it's in this city, whether it's in Atlanta, whether it's Tampa, Miami, wherever the hell you go. And I, each individual member of Three Six Mafia has their own personality. Yes, they yeah. do. Yeah. 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 For sure. For yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they're well respected, and everyone, you know, mm-hmm. everyone loves their music, and it's still bidding. Well, that's, that's the thing that people don't understand is like you come together to create something bigger. A lot of the, the thing with Memphis is a lot of us have been divided to not work together. Yeah. It's really, really hard to get creative people in a room. Yeah. Do you know how fucking difficult it was to get this podcast and everyone to come at the right time? It's yeah. Really hard. It's not even that. And we're not even. We're not, Hi, yeah. We're on the creative spectrum. We're Hi, just, we're just, <laughs> just talking shit. We're just talking shit. Yeah. We're all doing good. So, uh, so who would you like to work with? Uh, I know dude. you said Project Pat. You want you'd like to do a Hell song with yeah. Project Pat. Hell like what yeah. ki- what type of song is it that you're you're wanting him to to hop on? Yeah, you know, one already. If you can talk Pat, about it, you know. a Project Pat song has to be fucking Memphis as fuck. Yeah, though. like yeah, it yeah. has to have that 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 classic inner sample. And you're like it has you know the way to write. They got a fucking juke to it. All of that shit. Like it has to be a hundred percent Memphis culture, as well as I need. I want. I got Crunchy Black. I want Project Pat. And then, hopefully, when the success comes, I get Juicy J. Then I feel like I got all the hey man, Avengers and the shit. The 808 hi-hat combo is unbeatable. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I heard it all. 100%. You know? and, and you got, like, folks, like, down in Louisiana, like, Suicide Boys, that have been biting out there for a minute. Yeah. But, you know, Coast oh, yeah. come, Coast Hands come, yeah. So, so even going back to uh, talking about who I worked with uh, in the past and shit, so, of course, I got Black Smurf, who I went to school with. Um, and made songs with we got two videos in the past. I don't know if they're still on YouTube, but I still got them. And then um, Chris Travis, yeah, um, went to high school with him. Me, him, so you went to Fight Smurf. Station, not I, White Station, Fight Station, G Town, <laughs> Germantown. Oh, yeah, shit. I thought they went to Fight Station. No, no, no. They all they all graduated from Germantown and Jeffrey. Yeah, Jeffrey graduated. You graduated Germantown too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 This is off record. Smurf and all them talking. They were like, yeah. Uh, don't, 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 don't say no. Off record is a game. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Not, all right, continue, continue. Right continue. Right now. But nah. Um, Jesus. Okay, you got, you got <laughs> Black Smurf. Uh, we control what's getting put out. I'm sorry. Black Smurf, Chris Travis, uh, Jeffrey. We all went to high school. I don't have any songs with Jeffrey, though, but I knew him. Like I've seen him in school before. And then... um. Xavier Wolf, who did not go to high school with us, but I skated with him before. Hey. Sick. So, like, that's the people that I've <laughs> Hollow Squad. worked with. Hollow Squad, yeah. yeah. People that I've worked Hollow with. Squad was, was yeah, Xavier really Wolf, weird. he's got a song with Juice. Yeah. Hell Hell yeah. yeah. Actually, Jeffrey right. does, too, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. The awesome thing about, you know, everybody in the group is they have their own distinctive style. Like, yeah. you know, everybody's got their own thing going, mm-hmm. you know. From everybody at the table, I mean, I, I've been hearing about you for weeks. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I've been busy as hell. I had yeah. my own shit going, but like, after the podcast, I gotta hear what you got going. All kind of shit. Everybody bro. been telling me like, dude, this guy's organic. You know, he's Every, fresh. He's got like, he's got something to bring to the table that's different from the mainstream of what we're all yeah. hearing through the ears and through the radios and shit. So, yeah. Every song you listen to is song. gonna be different as hell. I'm not gonna be consistent at all. Hey, <laughs> hey, avant garde is exactly. is what's up. Like avant garde and like just experimental stuff. Yeah, like that's what makes the world We're all turn around. As whether we go. it's art, whether it's music, Jesus whether it's Christ videography, yeah. whether it's just everything and in between. You know, like how Ye be doing like with the clothes and shit. Like, yeah, you know, and, I, and Ye was very influential to me. Um, maybe high school. I have never in my life seen somebody go as hard of the paint. Man made 19.6 in a fucking day off those Yeezy pods. Yeah. Damn. Kanye, bro, um, has mastered 
getting the attention of social media. Market manipulation. Yeah, that, definitely. Loaded words and, and just all of that, bro. Getting the attention of the entire music industry, the fans as well as his peers and the media. internet and media <laughs> and just constructing that to work all into his grandmaster scheme. He's 100% intelligent in that area. Yeah. Yeah. I would say uh, Takashi 6 9 <laughs> hey. but, but with talent. Yeah. Hey, okay. Fair, fair. Yeah. yeah. That dude, man. Jesus. He, he can get some attention for sure. Yeah. The thing about Ye, though, his name ain't never been on no paperwork. And that all, the other thing about Ye is no one really, – I don't think anyone takes him serious enough to be like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill this guy. Like, he can say whatever he wants, but I don't think anyone's going like, well, to react that way. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, a lot. There's it's a different crazy, crazy, crazy having, like, people having mental are. illness. Well, yeah, that so, exactly. Which, so I think they're like brushed allegedly, off. allegedly have <laughs> mental illness. But I, yeah, whatever. I, he says he's autistic now. Well, his we, words. We can go with that on the podcast. Yeah, that, that's his words. Yeah, he said he has autism and not bipolar. Yeah, he said a, they misdiagnosed. Autism speaks. That's tomorrow. Uh, but look, visual day of blue. A misdiagnosis of medication will make you do some crazy things if you don't need it. Correct. Correct. You know, that's uh wow. I mean I believe there's something. There's there's something. Or is it just the insanity of an artist? So you said you, you went to yeah. Ger- you went to Germantown. Yeah. Did you did you ever like you skateboard did you skateboard in high school? I started skateboarding in middle school. I, I wish I was like skateboarding on Germantown's campus because it's pretty I know a few set of stairs I could have hit. But I didn't get good, like great at it until college at MTSU gotcha. where I met Takey. But um, I didn't get good at it until then, and uh, just skateboarding off of there, steps yeah. and shit, getting the police called on us every fucking day. And then now that I'm old as shit, I don't even. I feel like <laughs> sk- skateboarders and music, like it, it's it's one of those things where it's like you have to keep doing it till you get it right. Yeah. So definitely. it's like that's it's why it goes so hand in hand. It's like you you might land it right that time, but like when you yeah. look at the video or like same with doing a song. Yep. You know, it might not be exactly what you wanted to see or the pro. You know, mm-hmm. but is uh, is that helps you like develop your style? Skateboarding? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Do you have a it, lot of like skateboard fans? Like, because I feel like that that community gathers around people pretty hard. Yeah, it but. it honestly, it got me around a different community of people in general. Okay. And um, it may have saved me from doing stupid shit. Respect. For sure. So Probably. You, know, you said earlier in the conversation, you know, one of your main inspirations was Wheezy. Yeah. And you know, it, you know, Wheezy, he's the one that brought that to the mainstream with rap. It's just yeah. being that skateboard, just being the being the outsider. And, and he know. was the guy to do it the right way because if we had who's the guy who made Kick Push B O B? Uh, Lupe Fiasco. Lupe. I yeah, said fucking Lupe. B-O-B. <laughs> You're Lupe close. Fiasco You're close. <laughs> You're close. Show goes is on. a backpack rapper. Who the community probably oh, he, wouldn't take He's got take the backpack on, always pushing on a skateboard too. He had, a, he had one hit. Yeah, and apparently he's a very good rapper though. But you know, people don't want to hear that and intelligent yeah, ass industry. shit. Nope. <laughs> yeah, because so many people are just stupid. That's why he's family. <laughs> just a follower, man. Just like because this person just it's that following stuff just gets on my nerves. Like, where was that? I went to midget wrestling this weekend. <laughs> what? For real? I went to midget wrestling at Rail Garden. Okay, yeah. For they real? Midget wrestling. It was all midgets. I missed that. Shout out so DJ I got, Icon. I got a homie, Hollywood, the midget. He used to wrestle, but he used to wrestle like full size guys. So, you know what I mean? What the fuck? Like, but uh, how was that? It was crazy, man. It was like all the college kids there, but it was funny because I was I was there with some friends or whatever, and they're like looking around. They're like, "Bro, everybody looks the same. <laughs> like everybody, like all the girls dress the same, look the same." Oh, you talking about like, the, all the, the dudes, audience. all we, the Todds and the Chads Brass, and the frat Chaz, bros? Yeah. Josh, it was like, Jake, Kelsey, it was Chad, like, bro, it's like Stacy. Yeah, know, it was God. like, bro, I for real thought they were all NPCs, bro. Like I'm. <laughs> <laughs> they were. They were. That's the problem. They were. Like, they absolutely were. What is going on, bro? Midget wrestling. Playable character type beat. <laughs> Midget wrestling in a beer sounds like a fucking great night, bro. It and does, and then the, fr- the frat bros over here slapping the midgets on the ass. What the <laughs> fuck? That's gnarly. Why? I mean, they, they, got, they got violated, man. They got violated. If you told me I could pay $150 to 
to Dang. hit one of the major wrestlers lightly with a trash can. Wait, is I it? I would do it. No. Is, well, wait, is all it? All love to their sport. Is it female? Yeah, no, like, no. So uh, in Oxford, the same kind of like uh, the, the group of the midget wrestlers. So they go around. Are you allowed to say that? Is yeah, that they go to be around said? statewide. I mean, they call themselves midgets. Like little WWE. people wrestlers. They, 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 they call right. themselves. I don't know the right oh. term. In Oxford, there was this video that went viral of they, one of the one of the midget wrestlers, the, or I guess the or I guess the manager. They offered them. They're like, hey, it's 150 bucks if you want to get in the show and hit you know one of them with a trash can. Obviously, you're not gonna like hate him, hit him with a trash can, but it's all a part of the show. You know, you, you get a drunk chat up there. You know. The fleece button down and, and the chubby <laughs> shorts that are cutting off their circulation, they're obviously gonna get up there, you know, and they go hit them with a trash can, you know, easy 150 bucks. But I mean, it's always a good show at the end of the day. That's fucking crazy, bro. <laughs> I swear. Yeah, I, the, I, was, I was right there. I was like, what the, the fuck? Yeah, they're supposed to be coming back like <laughs> to DJ Icon. Yeah, it's it's Icon Cafe Icon, yeah. on, uh, on Witten. Yeah, it's a sidecar. Yeah, side, sidecar is a tandem too. Which yeah. uh, that's actually tandem. Which we're in beignets, by we're the way. We're in beignets. This is oh yeah, uh, we forgot. Main we didn't even Street. announce where we're at. Yeah, we're yeah, at beignets. beignets. Shout Wonderful out beignets. bunch. Thank you to them. Thank you to Tandem, which is the their parent company, which owns a slew of of, of restaurants around the city. Where sidecar is one of those. Like I said, midget wrestling coming up. We'll try to get the dates and post it with this video they, or something. Show, show. And they say there's nothing to do in Memphis. <laughs> there's so there's too much. I feel like is, the, the problem that, for people in the in like in the city, like actually in the city, there's too much to do in Memphis. That's the yeah, problem. But they're all coming. From but it's at the same places. time, same day, same whatever. It's all. It's always the same. It's never it's, a problem. It's it's hard. This place is figuring out what to do on a nightly basis is very difficult. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it's too much. Just too much. Eat and drink. Is, it's like you can go to you go one place and then you can go to another place and then yeah you know hell yeah I have to find the midget wrestling I can't find it but, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> y'all gotta go to midget wrestling I'm telling you is that when when is that you say you say is that no, sidecar it's up soon sidecar no, no, no. it's, it's with DJ Icon right uh, looks like it's actually here we go the micro divas are coming micro wrestling federation returns to sidecar. Cafe Memphis Friday May nineteenth at nine p.m. Oh, so all ages. You can get your tickets so early. Divas, so Hell I guess yeah. early. female midgets this time, dude. I See, gotta go. They were, they were male midgets, midgets here. That's what Wait. he's saying. Cheers I gotta, to that I gotta one. go to that. Look, shit. Look, look. Cheers to that. That looks wild. That's okay. I guess it's guys crazy. and girls. Micro Wrestling Federation. I'm sorry. It's, My, what you say, Micro? It, it, it said Divas on it's the other It's in May, thing. but I mean, you got you got November That's coming amazing. up, so it's six months Dude. early for Throw Hands November. This you know about Throw Hands November? <laughs> throw Hands November. Throw Hands November. Crazy. Yeah. Like it's just it's, it's hands for everybody. In no, I like hanging out with midgets, man. Like I've got, I got a few friends in the midgets. <laughs> I actually had a I actually had a friend that uh, he was a dwarf. You know, there's like a height range. I, I forgot what it is it's off like the top of my head. Four nine and it, below. Yeah, if you're like in a, between like this and this, you're a dwarf. If you're this and this, you're a midget. Yeah. And like he was an actual dwarf. God, <laughs> God rest his oh. soul. Look, look, Daniel. Somebody actually kicked him out of a car on the side of the road, and somebody, I guess, unfortunately, didn't see him. That's how he and died. Hit him. Oh, that's yeah. fucked up. God damn, bro. It's, <laughs> It's like, he, I'm trying not to laugh. I I'm trying my best not to laugh. What the fuck? It's, it's not funny. But it's not, you're making me laugh. <laughs> but it's funny. I can't help it. it God rest his soul, man. But <laughs> what the fuck? The guy's going to get... <laughs> I'm like, what are you leading into, bro? I mean, he was walking down the road and they didn't see him, man. You know, like. Oh I'm thinking it's like a setup to a joke. I'm, he actually died? Oh, yeah, that's how he died. Yeah, rest, in peace. rest in peace, my guy. Yeah, rest in peace, Daniel. Do, do you at least have a nickname or something? Like, you know, uh, Lil D. Lil D. Hey, hey, hey. Rest in peace, Lil D. Rest in peace, Lil D. Lil D. Rest in peace, Lil D. Lil D. Peace, Lil D. All the man. Lil D, man. He was cool. He was cool, little dwarf, man. I love that dude. He was, dude, not. Nah, that little dude, <laughs> he'll drink you under the table, man. I'm what did he drink me under the table, though? Yeah, just don't get too close to him because you might, I love probably, how you might the uppercut you. <laughs> <laughs> what with the one, two, fuck? And done combo. No biscuit. <laughs> They're going to fucking cancel you guys' first episode. <laughs> <laughs> two piece, no hey, biscuit, man. no drink. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking crazy. No, look, what I did, I, I did... Uh, 
my, my only <laughs> close up encounter with a midget, really, I got a tattoo by a midget. And when I walked wow. in the shop, he was, like, he was sitting down in the seat normal, like behind him. Uh huh. He had that shit pumped up all the way, right, though? Yeah, bro. He had this. <laughs> so I'm thinking this <laughs> like a regular fucking guy. I tell him the idea and shit. He draws it up. He's like, is that cool? He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. He comes around the corner and he just. And he gets, he hops down. And Come here, fella. Just, and Come you here. have to like not <laughs> laugh <laughs> because this guy's about to mark you fucking forever. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, He'll like secretly draw a little penis on you <laughs> <laughs> like, that you can't see. I actually know a guy that did that to some, this artist that did that to this guy I know. But anyway, keep going. Bro. <laughs> no, he, he came around the corner, bro. And I'm just like holding back the biggest laugh of all time as he comes up and puts the shit on my side and shit and I'm like god damn. So he, he was like scooting like a doctor chair kind of but like you know his leg wasn't t- quite just around. I was definitely on the table getting the tattoo and he, his chair is pumped all the way up yeah, and shit. Wow. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't laugh at it until I left yeah. but god damn. Well, was it a good tattoo though? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah he did his fucking thing. I mean, somewhere in East Memphis if you know a, a midget that works at East Memphis and I mean that tattoos in East Memphis. I'm pretty sure. He's uh, still I, I, mean, I mean, what it looked like though. Like it, it, I just got like the word faith, but it's like big as hell oh, on my side. Okay. Actually, I did a tattoo for the first time this weekend on somebody. Oh, yeah. What? It was, <laughs> it was horrible. Uh, it was like okay, so it's a girl. Like it's a girl I know. Shit. She's in town from Hawaii. It's her birthday weekend, and uh, she's got like just a little area right on her side. She was like, she wanted every all her friends to do a, a tattoo on her. <laughs> yeah. Of something. You know, one person did a diamond, one person did a little triangle. I tried to do a heart. A heart. It looks more like an alien with the staff. <laughs> but shit. so yeah, tattooing, man, that like I I, I don't I don't think that's something so I can do. So you had your shit with an alien gun though, he was like, You know, you should not pass. It's just like <laughs> touch putting the gun on somebody just feels I don't know, man. It's it, it takes just, a talent to do I tattoos. literally just did that uh last year. First tattoo of someone on someone. They were doing like their own. They got their tattoo gun. They were trying to do their first on their by themselves. They were doing a heart, and they couldn't do the heart. Like, you know, it's kind of difficult doing a perfectly symmetrical yeah, sides and shit. Definitely, especially I'm, yeah, especially <laughs> doing it on yourself and shit. <laughs> Shake it. So I'm like, let me do it. <laughs> let me try. I had no fucking idea that I fucked up terribly. Like I did the. She did one side, and I think I did the other. And it was like, you know, crooked as fuck because I couldn't get the, the gun to go straight down. It's like sideways and shit. And then me coming up with like the idea, I was like, oh, shit, I got to fix it. And I didn't want to panic and freak her out because no I fucked it. up. Yeah. I'm like, well, let me just draw like the, the arrow that goes through it and try to make it That's look like. That's kind of what mine ended up looking like. Yeah. It sounds like we did a similar tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and I did a fucking terrible job, bro. Pe- like, yeah. Who's, who's the best tattoo artist in Memphis right now, though? Man, to be honest, man, a lot of people, we got a homie, that S.A. Flacco, he actually raps. He's a Hispanic guy from Houston. They moved up to Ohio. And then he's since came back down to Memphis. Actually, man, he is a he's a great artist. You know, he's tatted on DJ Paul. He's tatted on, uh, I think Jelly Roll maybe. Just he's tatted a bunch of well known people, and he he does really good tattoos. He actually is at a Sinister Tattoo now over on uh, Stage Road, kind of near Bartlett, like across the streets Bartlett, but this side's Memphis or whatever. But uh, he's a pretty badass tattoo artist. Like as far as like. He, he doesn't do portraits though. They're not like, like real. It was like, it was like Neo. Tattoo of like his dog, and like it looks, yeah, it looks yeah, just yeah. like the dog. But I, yeah, show. But he does everything except for portraits. But he's he's really good. Now, but y'all know some other good artists yeah. in Memphis. Yes, I actually like to shout out. Like if you're talking about tri-state, so this the, there's this one fella. I mean, he will tattoo. He will look at this portrait, and of course, he's gonna tax you for it. But he's gonna charge you. For, he he gonna do your thing. Well, what was his get name? It probably about six months what? in advance. His name is Marco Salamanca, and he is fire with it. He's worked with Hunter Biffle. Uh, I, w- I want to say it's Pure 13, but I've seen him do portraits on all my friends, and he's doing a chess piece for me in a couple months, and I've never seen work like it, honestly, besides Mash Cow. Yeah, I know Jelly Roll. I saw where he, the other day he was saying, uh, which, you know, he's got tats on his face and all that. He was talking about how a lot of people, like, try to, like, pick artists based off of, like, price. So you need to pick uh, up. Find yeah, a good yeah, artist. That's real getting trouble. Find a good artist. I do hundred percent off vibes. Stick with that for artist. For sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? And pay for that sure. money that they want because overall, 
you know, you're going to set a goal, what, you, what you're trying to achieve, and then you're going to achieve it. I feel like a lot, a lot of things, it's like uh, cheap prices attract, you know, the, the customers that you get with cheap prices just don't work that way, you know. Yeah, dude. So you got any tats? I got four. I'm not. I, don't, I only have like words and shit. I don't have any oh, okay, images. Oh, okay. Got you. I got you. Far. And I'm like a a fucking mud. I have every one of them were done with different yeah. artists and shit. Uh, so I don't even know anybody's name. So I get all your tattoos with different vibes though. Like it's just like, hey, different. I'm gonna vibe this day. I'm gonna vibe this day. Like you know, <laughs> it just depends. Yeah, all of my up. all of mine are just uh words to like I guess keep me level headed. Yeah. You know. Especially in like as an artist and shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I got them in like all different cities, like Memphis, Atlanta, and Murfreesboro. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. Like, yeah. All different cities. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually don't have any tattoos. They were trying. They were trying to tap me up. At None. Over there this weekend. Yeah, I don't have any. Damn. But I was like, I was like, yeah, they almost talked me into it. Cause like everybody in this group, they have like R O tattooed on them. It stands for real one. Yeah. So it's like all oh, the everybody in the click, they got the little tattoo, but it's like they give it to each other. But I'm just like, eh. yeah, I got, I got my. I started to get it. I felt honored that they wanted to get. I got, I got, I got my brain on my hand. So I got, I got it. The only reason I did that is because there's this, there's this dude. He, uh, several people have got it tatted on them, and I felt bad at that point because this, this kid was like, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get this whole like big one on my leg, and I was just like. If other people are going to put it on their bodies forever, I'm putting it on my hand where everyone's going to see it, you know? Yeah. So, I, but I was in, not in the right headspace. Take care of your mental health. Better help. 100%. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Better help or whatever that is. Yeah, mental health is <laughs> definitely important, man. Uh, just trying to get a sponsor, okay? Better help. Thousand <laughs> mm-hmm. percent toast sure. to uh, fucking mental health. Just yeah, mental yeah, health. Yeah, it's yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. So does uh, does doing music is that something that you've, has helped you with? Like, have you ever had any like mental health issues type stuff? Um, dude, the most the the most dangerous my mental health could get would be just like me fucking questioning of whether or not music is for me because that's like the thing I love the most in the world, or like me questioning like my religion or some shit. So when you, say, never, when you say dangerous, you mean like like dangerous to your to your energy? To so like, both of those things are like heavy as fuck in my life, like my religion and my music and shit. And of course, obviously, if one teeters, it's like, holy shit, everything, yeah, yeah. everything before now, what does it even yeah, mean? Nothing, <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? Like, nothing exists. So like I can get in that headspace, or I have gotten in it before, but um, I, nothing that my music, I guess, is pulled me out of so I like cr- like creating the like the i feel like having the task to do it's like i've got to make this I've, I've got this vision for this project or this i've got vision for this piece like this piece of music that i'm trying to make mm-hmm. but it's just like it's, it's something to do is something to occupy like the energy that you're trying i don't know i don't know what i'm trying well to say it, I have translated how I felt in music a lot. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get at. I, yeah. I didn't know the right words. That's why I needed you. You're the you're the lyricist, my guy. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, like things like uh, I did go through a maybe two or three year period of a uh, crazy ass heartbreak or some shit, and you know that weighing on your brain, and made a couple songs about that. Or do you, do you have do you have one of those songs that you can think of that's that's about that? Hell yeah, I got a few of those about that. One I like. What's your favorite one? What's your what's your, what's the I got one, biggest heartbreak though? So I I got one that I kind of made into like a joke kind of video, but it's it's but it actually is it actually is like yeah the emotions are real. The video is it's, just like the song to, is yeah. essentially me telling my ex that I miss her and the girl that I'm with now I don't fucking like. And I got the fucking girl that what's I was that with. What's that song? What's that? The girl that I was with is literally <laughs> acting in the fucking video. I know. No. And I'm telling her, like, hey, no, this so, isn't okay. about you. Like, no. Sauce wow. Poppy violated. Sauce Poppy violated. Terrible okay. guy. Okay. <laughs> but look, wow. look. Did you tell her? Does she know now? Oh, you still, you still talking to her? She now. She, 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 yeah, she watches now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's called, uh, I think, I Just Want You to Sit on My Face. But it's like the acronym. Oh, okay. IJW, that shit. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's on YouTube. You watch the fucking video. Uh, I got her shit. acting in this hey, shit. Hey, we got the love links in the uh, captions. Shit. We have all the links nah, to all the But was she about. playing your ex or was she playing herself? <laughs> Literally. 
fuck. I don't know what goes. No, she was playing my ex. <laughs> oh no! She was playing her competition. That's Damn. wild. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> that was the the sickest shit I've ever done in my life. Wow. <laughs> I think we might be having a guest join us soon. Uh, Rod Bland's downstairs. If he's gonna come up here, who's that? Rod Bland. Rob Bland. Bob, Bobby Blue. Bob, was it Bobby Blue Bland? My, my, I don't is, really is know people. Man. I'll, I don't, I don't yeah, really know people. He's a he's a wonderful drummer for the uh, Memphis uh, Memphis Royals. The rules play every Thursday at BB King's with Ashton Riker. Shout out Ashton. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Sure. Yeah, I love that. So awesome me and Ashton, band. me and Ashton worked at uh we worked at Old Vintage together. Speaking of Ashton and ex girlfriend a, songs. Oh shit. <laughs> Ashton. Uh, Wait, you need to do a song with Ashton. Actually, we had Ashton, look, yeah. look, that would be sick, we were also dude. With Ashton. Yeah. A- Ashton. Oh. He's like you a, know he's a singer, Riker. but it's like he kind of got like a soul Memphis soul vibe. He was actually on the Take Me to the River documentary and tour. Yeah, um, when he was like fifteen or sixteen. One of the like greatest young. singers I've I've experienced. Yeah, he's he's a great singer. Uh, I was at Ashton's or no, we were at Little White's house one night. Yeah, and it was a bunch of the guys or whatever, and like I think it was like I think I I think I was going through some stuff with, with the relationship. Another homie was going through some stuff in the relationship. And then for some reason we got on some music or he played some of his old music like where he was like you said rapping about like an ex or something yeah, like yeah. that. And uh man, look, it was a bunch of dudes in there getting all teary eyed and sappy and stuff <laughs> over there listening to some of his music, man. So a lot of times some of that music, man, when you put your heart and your soul into it, it's like you can hear you can hear that. People oh, yeah, can definitely. hear that. They can feel that. You know. Definitely. So that that's how you know, like a good singer or and a rapper for that matter, is when they can actually move you, move you and get you to tear up and and feel their emotions. Like my my literal my deepest cut about that same subject is uh it's called Backwoods. It's one of my top uh, listen to top stream songs. That so you wrote Backwoods. That's all, that's all I heard. I used to. I, the, I used to hang out with like famous rappers. Here, 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 shit, here's so the, I can't roll backwards. Here's the age old question though: Frontos or backwards? I'm not even a fan of backwards. I so, hated that shit when we. Used so why did you? Shit. So you made the song to? So I when I lived in Atlanta, I used to hang out with a uh, Mike Will made it and like yeah. the air drummers and shit. And when we go to like events or clubs or shit, all they fucking rolled was backwards. Yep. So I had no other choice. But like why? To get handed backwards. All the damn time. At this point, man, shit. If you if you got that much experience, I'd be rolling for Walker right now. You know, I, he, I'm he, just, he, he looking for a professional brawler. I just rolling fucking. Honestly, I'm simple as hell. I'm game green every time. Yeah, hey, can't go wrong, man. That's a yeah. solid choice. Solid choice. And then when I was in Denver, I I rolled a Dutch because they didn't have game. Dutch berries be fine. Yeah, it'd be fire. I'm gonna roll blunt. Well, if you go to Mexico, you might have to find your Cuban cigar to put something in. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit. Hey. It's also very you rare. One of the bitches and a half of some Mexican derby. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about? It's, it's very rare that I smoke too, so I can't even really weigh in on what's like the best thing to roll in. If, yeah, if anything, I prefer pa- papers, but I can't even roll in papers. Honestly, I'm terrible at that shit. <laughs> yeah. Just like you got it, I'll hit it. So you, so you, <laughs> like, you, you, you so you weren't like you, you, you don't got like sto- you don't, you aren't like on the stoner kick. Like you're not like a stoner type shit. In Atlanta, I was, but I, like since I've been back in Memphis, Atlanta. Atlanta. How, how, long, how long were you in Atlanta? I was in Atlanta for three years. How long were you in Atlanta? Three years, yeah. Hey. 2017 to 2020. I, I was, I was 15 to I think. No, I think I was 14 to 17. Damn. So all right, when I was leaving, you were going. Damn. Yeah. Okay. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> so how you like Atlanta as a Memphian going to? Did Atlanta? that help develop you? How, like, how'd you like that? Uh, how, did it change your style? Did it help? Did it do anything? So I've always been like a. Uh, I guess I just had never been the typical Memphian anyway. Yeah. Right. So I'm like worldwide as fuck. So I think I kind of gravitated to their culture more um, when I was in Atlanta and shit. But so. With, with with Atlanta, like while you're there, what part, what what section were you like? Where did you live? I lived in in the burbs, so I didn't know. Like, was it like Little Five Points? Was it Buckhead? Where were you? Oh, I was in Smyrna. Smyrna. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. But I was literally all over the city every single day. Okay. All over and outside every single day. So were you doing music when you were down there? Yeah, I was doing music. Um, 
I was taking video and photography for um, some of Mike Will's artists. And, yeah, pretty much, yeah, that. Just networking like a motherfucker. Yep. Shit that they want me to do here in Memphis around these people that I'm nothing like and could not benefit me at, benefit me at all. I was doing that shit in Atlanta, and it was like, sick bro well so that's kind of like the thing about this like podcast it's a memphis throne and we're trying to bring like we want the people who are doing shit in the city to want to sit on the throne it's like why would you not want to sit in a like why would you not want to stay here like you said instantly you were like i want to leave yeah it's like why it sucks because it's like it it's so much we can do there's so many avenues we can tap into and make everybody profitable if we all just work together people are hard here there's a lot of places there's a lot of because honestly there's just a lot of room for improvement so that's why the playing field is so low for yeah gotcha. literally anything you're into we can expand upon this because there's no fucking avenue for it that's why yeah i don't i don't think that there's really anybody doing what we're doing right now and like everybody's being like oh you're doing this. it's but i've tried to get people to work on it it's Dude. really hard it's lost hard. complacency in a nutshell yeah but I, I see what you're doing. I feel like, 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 wanting to leave the city. I feel like we need to keep more people here instead of trying to keep the money in the city. Yeah, but um, I do feel like that's a a long battle to fight. Yeah, I feel that for sure. And, I think, yeah, and, yeah. and 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 these young eleven, twelve, thirteen year olds are killing very rapidly, especially in my neighborhood. And I'm just trying to get the yeah, fuck away from okay. that, bro. Yeah, you know? yeah, man. I, mean, I don't hey, want to be so Memphis that I get consumed by Memphis. Yeah, that's why Paul and Juicy are on here before. That's you it. know, people have taken yeah. shots at certain people, which I won't say who and all that. But you know, somebody tries to shoot at you, you know, one of your bodyguards gets hit. You know, it makes you not want to be living in your city. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and then, then look I, at look at Big Jook. Yeah, God is brother, and I fucking carry everywhere I go, and I don't want to have to do it to somebody. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And ruin what the I fuck mean, I want to do. It's like in life. now, nowadays, it's like you got, you literally have to watch every single corner or facet that you're doing. And that's yeah. why you have a lot of these cities like Memphis, Atlanta, Export, now to LA, to the West Coast, or going on up to New York, even though New York's its own thing, like, like Chirac. Yeah. You know? It's, it, it's like, it's just a battle you really don't have to fight. No, because everybody's actually. Not everybody, not. Either end I up. I fucking go to. Idaho, they're not worried about. <laughs> they're worried about potatoes, motherfucker. They ain't worried about our shit. Yeah, they're not worried about a fucking <laughs> Ultima with drive out tags that's beat up and dented Hell in the front. Uh, or the fan fan. Filled with kids that are about to rob you at a gas station. Like, that's yeah. what I'm trying to get away it's from. It's such a disparity, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and I was about to say the biggest lie of my fucking life. I was about to say, and I love Memphis. No, I don't fucking love Memphis. But I do feel as if. Uh, if people got their act together, it could be a beautiful city. Well, so this is the first episode of the Memphis Throne. And like, I don't want, like, I really want people to see that. It's like, I want to see how the growth is. I want people to see there's, we see a problem. We see there is no solution. So let's just, like, you know, what do let's we do? Where, it's, what do we do? What, what do we do? It's individual as fuck. It's individual. That's what, yeah, exactly. You, you literally, it just, like everyone says, it starts at home and shit. Who are you around the people you you hang around? What kind of influence do you have on them? And uh, do yeah. you do you correct your people when they're about to do something stupid as fuck, or or uh, you know like if you are in a position to where people look up to you or you're getting a lot of money and people think you you know have a voice to them, what are you saying to them? Yeah. Are you telling them make killing lame again or are you? Making a song saying I'm gonna pick up this fucking big gun and kill the guy that's, next door. That's, kind of, that's a wonderful point you made there. Yeah. I, re- I really like that. I like the stutter step. It's like, it's if if we get more people in those hoodies, we got was it saucepoppy.com? That's what it is. Yeah, that's a great it's, message. It's just changing the narrative, bro. I like, it. so is it only one color? Well, I like that color. That like that greenish. So I got two. I yeah. like that greenish though. It's like off. It's like a little. The different. greenish. The that. That uh, actual design comes with green, brown, and black. Okay, okay. And then I got the other Make Killing Lame again. It's like a free Palestine version now, of shit. Now you got, got, the big you, ass, you got big ass sizes? Yeah, I think. What you got well, the big ass sizes? The biggest, I think, is like 2XL. Oh, man. You got to get, man. So I, got, I got special order something there. What you? 
<laughs> it's a type shit. I can do four XLT, or I had to do a five XL to be able. Can to you get a special one for Big? Can, yeah. can we get a special one for Big John? Can we get a special one for Big John? Is that possible? God damn! I worked through I like a you. third party. I don't even print them. It's like yeah. a third party in California. Well, tell me, Nick, get want, with it. If you Ooh. want something local, we'll talk after the podcast. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, yeah. So, what, what we ha- talk about beignets, man. Beignets has some. So, what you think about the food here, Ryan? So, beignets. You're, the, sand- you're myth- the, sandwich, the sandwich guy. Well, so, so yeah, be- the sandwich clicks. So what's, what's hitting at beignets? Beignets, everything's hitting. Everything's hitting. I've all- so, well, yeah. my favorite thing, and I, I like to eat it a lot because my ex girlfriend's favorite uh, animal was alligators. So, like, I really love the fact that you can eat an alligator sandwich here, okay? <laughs> she would oh, get so mad here, every time. Talk to me nice, bitch. Here at Big A's? <laughs> here, yeah, you can get an alligator sandwich Holy here, shit. for sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah alligator po' boy, it's yeah. just fine. That's, po- po- that's the only thing good. I've had here. That's the only thing I've had is the alligator po' boy. I think yeah. I had some gumbo. I know that was like, it's Louisiana type shit. You can never go wrong with a Benedict, especially yeah. here. Yeah. And the quality yeah. control is on point here. Like, you know. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, the catfish, the catfish. There's like a catfish with like, I think it's like some shrimp etouffee or something. You know what I'm talking about? I forgot etouffee. what it's called. But it's, yeah, yeah dude, the catfish is fire. Yeah, we definitely got, got I'm, actually, I'm going to order me something now. Yeah, okay, let's go get some, we're, we're about to get some food, wrap up this podcast. It's been a great episode. episode. Thank you, Sauce yeah, Poppy. Sam, yeah, man. Thank you, Sauce yeah, Poppy. Keep doing you your thing, man. bro. Thanks for having me on the first hey, episode, yeah. bro. That's hey, sick. his first episode, that you got you got to understand, first episode, that's 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 real yeah. estate. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's yeah. literally, yeah. it's so Hope sick. I deliver. Get your yeah. footprint on. And, and I can't did. tell you how many, how many people give me CDs, and I've heard people trying to come up. You know what I mean? A lot of it. It's trash. trash. Oh, he, he, I, look. I, sh- I, I see him. You, I see him. I see him. You. So I. I but I've been you. Him. I, 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 I. I definitely see where you. Yeah. You're. You. Yeah. You're. You're definitely. Uh. <laughs> On the next yeah, way. I, I. I. Maybe I need to see. What, man. I, I'm. A, I'm gonna see what I can do about making this project pet happen. Man. Hey. I, I want to hey. hear that myself. Oh my. Run it up. Run it up. Run it up. Dude, I would fucking yeah. massage your fucking shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, no, hey, no, 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 Hey, oh, hey, where'd y'all put the orange juice? Hey, it's been a great episode. Thank you, Sauce Poppy. Thank you. Yeah, Poppy. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it, bro. Hey. Memphis Throne, bro. Memphis Throne, salute. Salute. Yeah, right. Cheers, yeah, everybody. Cheers, everybody at home. Oh, Turn up. I got issues. He's got problems. Shit that's in my pocket for all that I keep, sir. Phone, wallet, keys, and nine millimeters. South Memphis streets of peace and a freezer.